Mm. So I'm very excited about that. It'll be my first mission trip and my first time out of the country. So is I'm, that right? Yes. Brenda, wow. And to Zambia for your first trip out as opposed to the Cayman Islands <laughs> or to, or to, uh, to Europe or somewhere. Right. Your first trip into Zambia, Africa. Wow. What has prompted that trip? Well, Greg, I just see a lot of adversity in life and a lot of struggles that we all, as just normal humans, go through on a daily basis. And instead of internalizing it and looking at the negative, I tend to focus on something that could be a positive or a silver lining in a bad, adverse situation. And I just decided that uh, looking at, at things in the big picture, my life is... is uh, very blessed compared to the insignificant things that go on around us uh, right. that we tend to make bigger than they really are. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the struggles that third world countries have, the poverty, the, the lack of electricity, the food sources, the, the lack of water supply, right. it, the devastation that they have is just so tragic compared mm -hmm. to where we've been born and raised and we're right. so blessed and we take that for granted. Mm. Um, so I just want to go over and give them myself and be humbled and try to help those that have been less fortunate. I was fascinated to see some of the facts and figures about Zambia that you've provided to get ready for this morning's interview, that 20 percent of the population of almost 10 million people had, uh, had been diagnosed with HIV positive and the life expectancy had dropped from the mid-50s down to right. 37, 37 for the entire country. And uh, the age of the children, let's say you're 15 years old, the majority of those kids, 20% of those kids are orphans. Either they, both of their parents have died of AIDS mm -hmm. or at least one of them. Uh, and it's just tragic, um, the poverty that they live in, the lack of food, the lack of clean drinking right. water. Right. Absolutely unacceptable. We had a guest about a year ago from Carolina Forest, J.J. Iguli, who had visited with a group of locals uh, from the Carolina Forest area, and he and his wife had actually lived over there for an extended period of time and uh, had every effort to continue to go back. How did you get involved with the group here? You said this is at, is it Palmetto Shores? Palmetto Shores Church. Right. Um, I, I began attending there, I'd say, in November, mm -hmm. and by uh, early January, they were forming a new team. They've been over there four or five times, wow. this, this group. the same group. Right, and uh, they're visiting a particular orphanage in Zambia, and then they're branching out to other villages in that area. Right. And um, they, had some, they had some open meetings and discussing just the poverty and the disease over there, and it really touched my heart. And uh, I just wanted to give of myself, and right. they're affording me that opportunity to be able to do that. Have they actually shared with you what a typical day will be like over there, or have you gotten some idea? Have you seen pictures of their trips to get an idea? What exactly will you be doing, Brenda? Well, it's definitely not a vacation. There, we're going to an orphanage. There's roughly 45 children over right. in that orphanage, and not right. only will we be helping building and, and working basically in their village will actually be ministering and witnessing to the children and then branching out into other areas of mm -hmm. other villages. We'll also be taking over food supplies and other resources and tools for, for them to use after we're gone. Um, but we're definitely going to try to build like a playground for the kids that they have, they don't have any playground and then just do some general work and repair that obviously the orphanage needs. Tremendous, Brenda. And, and uh, is there a native language over there that you all have some proficiency in, or do they speak English, or do they not speak much at all? They don't speak much at all. There will be some interpreters on right. hand that will be translating for us. That's great. That's great. I know you'd, you'd gone through extensive efforts, as had the other 19 uh, men and women that are going to raise funds for the trip. Is that something you can, are you continuing to raise funds, or any of the other members? continuing to raise funds, I suspect they need uh, oh, donations or otherwise across right. the board in Zambia. Each uh, individual has to raise $3,000 to 3, go on 000. this, 3000 wow. And uh, I was blessed that uh, I had cycled with the Police Unity Tour in 2006 and pretty much kept that as a hobby. So when the Myrtle Beach Marathon came in February, mm -hmm. the day after the marathon, I actually sent out some support letters and said, hey, I'm going to ride this uh, bicycle ride, 64 miles, can you please support me? These, uh, any kind of monetary donation that you can give me will be going for my Zambia trip to Africa. And I, I was able to, to raise some funds that way, but we continue to have yard sales. We're having a 
motorcycle run and a golf tournament in June. The motorcycle run will be Memorial Weekend, okay. and then we'll have a golf tournament that will be in June uh, to continue to raise uh, proceeds for all of us to be able to go over there That's, together. So if someone contacted the church, what's the best way if they wanted to find a way to help out on raising funds for the, uh, for the, for the uh, Zambian mission trip? Is it to contact the church directly or uh, I should have talked to you earlier about their website or their phone number, but uh, they do have a website. Okay. Um, don't Sorry quote me on PalmettoShores.com. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say that, but it is Palmetto Shores. They're located at the Sakisti Swing Bridge Great. on Easy Old, to find. yeah, Old Highway 544. Right. Or obviously, they can contact me, Brenda Christie, at 251-6757, okay, and I'll be right. glad to direct them to uh, our pastoral staff or or get answer any questions that. Possibly, I can't. That's answer. tremendous. Two five one six seven five seven. I hate to ask you to give that all over the air, but at the same time, you obviously want to raise funds for the event. And uh, since you know, you've done very well in your fundraising efforts, maybe not everyone else has finished right. raising the funds. And I'm sure that the folks in Zambia wouldn't mind if you go over your uh, goal there. Exactly. And continue to raise more dollars. Eight four three two five one six seven five seven and. The Myrtle Beach Herald, I think, last week had a lot of information. The church has got a lot of events going on in the next couple of weeks. I saw on our community calendar page, there's a lot of activities going on at the church. That's a right. great new location, a very active church. Is that the church that's pastored by uh, Ronnie Bird? Ronnie Bird, yes, sir. Yeah, formerly at the Myrtle, Myrtle Beach Community Myrtle Beach Church. Community I believe church. a lot of folks know Ronnie Absolutely. up and down the Strand, and mm -hmm. that must be a very exciting uh, place to be right now. It is. It's it's growing, and uh, we're just so excited for what God's doing and moving in all our lives, and we just want to share that not only locally but in other countries. Mm -hmm. How about you, Brenda? What are some of the other things you do when you're not riding 250 miles or even getting out to promote some of the events or, of course, planning a trip and tell us again the, the, the trip dates there to Zambia. We're going to be leaving here in Myrtle Beach July 31st okay. uh, on a bus going to Atlanta, Georgia and then we'll fly out from Atlanta to London and uh, we'll be coming back from Zambia August 15th. So you'll be gone a full two weeks. Yes. That is amazing. Golly, and to think again your first trip out of the country being to Zambia, how exciting. It is exciting. I'm a little apprehensive, but I'm very excited and, mm -hmm. and just hope that I can really do uh, the work that I need to be doing and I'm, that I'm humbly humbled by my experience. Right. You said the other 19 men and women, how many of them, uh, to the best of your knowledge, have been before and uh, will be experiencing for the second, third, fourth, or even fifth time? I want to say between seven and ten of them so have already half. been. And, yes, and, and they've gone multiple times to this area. Right. And they've seen the need, they've seen the struggles, and I, I'm just blessed to go under their leadership and, and help them uh, do that work. You all will continue raising funds all the way to July 31st. Absolutely. So another almost three months now little more than three months, uh, May, June, and, and much of July right. to raise funds. That's fantastic. Well, you know, obviously a, a big focus here on the Police Unity Tour, and to know uh, on that stretch, that 250-mile stretch, the entire stretch you said is how long for the officers that are actually traveling all the way from Georgia up to the uh, the, the facility there in, in Washington, D.C.? To Washington, to the Memorial Wall is 950 miles. 900. How many how many officers would actually be doing that entire 950 mile trip, Brenda? Actually, it's just usually 12 to 15 okay. riders. Right. But then once we get into Chesapeake, there's 350 more riders that right. join that, and total could be as much as 600 riders. Is that right? And they're all law leg? enforcement officers. I was about to ask: Is it does anyone ride that's not a law enforcement officer? No, this is uh, strictly for officers that are riding and that are active law enforcement officers, mm -hmm. and they're riding for officers killed in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. and clear, we just got a couple of minutes. Clearly, they're out raising funds. Uh, is it possible to still provide any funds for the police unity tour? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you can contact me right. again, 843-251-6757, sure. okay. and we still have open accounts for that cause. Absolutely. You know, it's so important when you think about every little, every little dollar, any dollar that can really be added, whether it's to a scholarship at Webster University in memory of Joe McGarry or uh, to the Police Unity Tour and for the dollars that are raised for that. Uh, I assume at some level those dollars are spread back to families or otherwise, how, what are most of the dollars raised 
for the tour itself? Where do those dollars go? Well, the Police Unity Tour has to maintain the memorial wall. Okay. All the uh, names, as I said, the 300 officers that were killed in line of duty, their names will be inscribed in that wall. Right. And they're also building a police museum and research facility on those grounds. And that's scheduled to open in 2011. Okay. And all the money that is raised will go to the new facility and the construction of that new facility, as well as concerns of police survivors. Some of those funds actually do filter back into surviving family members for mm -hmm. officers killed in the line of duty. Critical, critical. Absolutely. Again, Officer Scarborough back in the 1940s. So there have only been two in the history of Myrtle Beach's police department, two officers. I say only, that's two mm -hmm. too many, two clearly. Too many. but. Um, when you highlighted that 300 officers around the country were taken, their lives taken in 2007 alone, a community that's both as small and as large as Myrtle Beach, a community that has millions of folks visiting the area, clearly a lot more pressures on the police department than probably anyone ever imagined. Right. Probably anyone ever imagined. So, uh, Officer Scarborough, and you said what year was that? Right? 1949, and, and Greg, back in 1949, there were no compensation for surviving family mem members. Nothing had been set in place. It was almost unheard of that uh, you would suffer a loss of that kind. Uh, so we're really blessed to not only make the public aware of it, but to be able to provide some, some funding and some assistance to these families. And one of Officer Scarborough's daughters, I believe, has really uh, been thrilled with the recognition that y'all uh, not had finally provided, but were providing in a different way, as you say, uh, be helping to recognize uh, her family yes. and him uh, for his loss of life there. Yes, she, she lives here locally. She lives mm -hmm. in the Garden City area, and she right. was actually 15 years old when her father was killed. Mm -hmm. And um, she was just happy that we recognized that and uh, gave her some peace of mind that he was a police officer when he was killed. Even though it was his very first day, he was still a police officer when he died. Boy, oh, Brenda, that's tremendous. Thanks so much for being with Thank us you this so morning. Much. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Thank you so much. Enjoy being here. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People's Office of Brenda Christie of the Myrtle Beach Police Department. Come on now. Take the time. Get out the pen and paper. we got three big events here. One international, one national, and one very local. All of them tied together the common purpose of making a difference in others' lives. Think about this. Kicking off this Thursday, May 1st, down there in Glencoe, Georgia, 12 to 15 officers riding an entire 950-mile trip. They're going to be coming through here in the Myrtle Beach area on uh, this Friday, May 2nd. Think about it. 7.30 a.m. to recognize a special ceremony there to recognize Officer Gary of the Georgetown Police Department rolling up into Myrtle Beach at 10.45 to, to honor and recognize Officer Scarborough at Ocean Woods Memorial Cemetery. And then the, the ride continues right on over to the Ted C. Collins Law Enforcement Center at 1130. That's this Friday. Get out there. Help recognize Officer Joe McGarry. His family will be there. A lot of other folks celebrating both his life but recognizing the extreme effort that folks go, th go through, officers in particular, giving of their lives every day. 1230 at the Conway Courthouse right there in the center of town, recognizing all officers whose lives have been lost in Horry County. Take the time to get out there. Take the time. It'll be a special day this, this Friday. We heard Brenda talk about another very special event kicking off on July 31st as they r roll down to Atlanta and get on that flight over to London and heading over to Zambia, Africa. A special event. You can be a part of that. PalmettoShoresChurch.com. PalmettoShoresChurch.com or 843- 246-7880. They still need some dollars. The 2008 Africa mission trip still needs some dollars. You've got three months to be a part of that. Give them a call, 246-7880, and help recognize the efforts that Officer Brenda Christie is going through as well. Thank Brenda, you, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah.